Hi, my name is Melissa Daniels and I have strabismus. Strabismus is when your eyes are not pointing in the same direction. And sometimes doctors will use something called prism in your glasses in order to help with that strabismus in the eye turn. And this video is going to go into all the details about what that prism is, what it does, and basically, is it going to ruin your vision? Is it going to help? A lot of people are really nervous about that, so we're going to get into all of those details. First, I just wanted to make sure that you know about what I offer. If you go over to learn.strabismussolutions.com, you can get some different free downloads to help you with your vision. You can sign up for my course, Mastering Peripheral, or you can sign up for a Zoom call with me and we can help get you started on your journey. Let's dive into PRISM. So, Prism is basically, if you want to think of what a prism is, it's just glass that is thicker on one side and thinner on the other side, like this. This is a stick prism and it's a tool used in vision therapy. But as you can see, it's thicker over here, so this would be called the base and this would be called the apex. And so if you put this in front of somebody's eye, the image that this eye is looking at, whatever eye the prism is over, it's gonna slide towards the apex. So I just think of the prism as a slide. And so when I put that over this eye, the image is gonna slide in for that eye. And this can be used in a lot of different ways for different types of patients. A lot of times it's used when somebody's having double vision, maybe their images are shifted slightly and so they'll put the prism over one eye or even both eyes and it'll shift that image to the same place so that both eyes are seeing the same thing. That can help with double vision. Um, sometimes if somebody has like a TBI or brain injury, their whole world is gonna look shifted in a direction depending on like where the brain injury happened. There's a lot of different, um, I mean, I'm not an optometrist, so I don't know all the details of all of this, but I know that it's used in that way to kind of shift your visual field so that, you know, you can feel more centered with your midline and all of the things, right? So it can provide people a lot of like relief from those visual symptoms. Um, and then there's like this other piece that the optometrists use it, and it's just kind of like this magical mystery, okay? They don't know exactly what's going on or why it works. I'm sure they do, but it's like really like, I don't know, I don't know why it works. But they'll put like tiny bits of prism and it'll just like help somebody's vision relax. It'll help them see more clearly. It'll help, like there's so many different things that it can help. And so there's not necessarily like, always like a pattern like, okay, if somebody has this prescription, add this prism to this side, like it's not that there's a lot of experimentation going on if, in the optometrist's office and then they kind of find what works best for the patient. Within all of that, you've got these prisms and you've got, I kind of divide it into two different gr groups. You've got the kind that's, they call it compensatory and then you've got the therapeutic. And so the comp compensatory, I've got some examples here and I guess it won't really make a difference to you because you can't tell that it's a prism. Um, these would be called like a compensatory prism. So my eyes turn in, right? Um, not very much, but I'm sure in these videos, if you wanna pause and like zoom in, you'll see that I still have a bit of an eye turn. I used to have a much larger eye turn and I've come a long way, but um, they're still not perfect. So these glasses have a prism that is base out. And so that means the thicker part is on the outside of both lenses, right? So the lenses are kind of opposite of each other. And that means it's sliding the images for both eyes into the middle, which is kind of gonna meet, make those images go where my eyes want to be. My eyes like to turn in. That's where they feel happy. <laughs> so these prisms kind of move those images in so that my eyes are more able to fuse. So sometimes I'll use these when I'm driving because. Um, if I'm really tired, sometimes I'll get double vision in the distance and I put these babies on and that double vision goes away. And so these are kind of more like my distance glasses. I haven't used them in quite a while because the double vision isn't really a problem anymore, but they're super helpful. So those are compensating for my eye turn, right? My eyes physically are not straight. And so they're physically moving those images to compensate for that eye turn. Um, the same thing can be true if you have an eye that turns out. Now, if you are only using one eye, the prism's not gonna really do much. This is more for like double vision to help get that single image, especially if you have an eye that goes up or down. Um, a lot of times prism is going to be used to compensate for that eye turn. Okay, so that's usually the prisms are going 
if, if it's on both glasses, they're going to be going in opposite directions. Um, okay, so the other way that you can use the prism is therapeutically. And so this is a little bit different because um, the idea is that you're helping the brain, but it's not permanent, right? What's like slowly over time, you're going to maybe decrease the use of the prism and it's going to kind of help through the process. Um, there's there's either there's two different kinds. Um, so these are a different pair of glasses. So these are the compensating for my eye turn. These are a yoked prism. So if it's called yoked, that means that both prisms are going in the same direction. So in these glasses, um, I believe it's base up. Yeah. So these are both base up. And so it's kind of shifting my world down. And why is that in my glasses? Because we were at a convention and they were experimenting. I was doing some different eye exercises and every time they put base up on me, I was able to see more depth. Why? I don't really know. It's that like magical mystery that we're just not quite sure. It doesn't really make sense. Usually with esotropia, base down is more helpful. It helps like open things up. So anyways, you, we don't need to get into all that detail, but there's just, it, it does something to my visual system, like almost like a reset switch and it's helping. Um, I've heard of other people with like, they might have like half diopter base out or base in or base up or base down. And again, this is all gonna be according to the optometrist. Not every optometrist is gonna use these like what we would call like a yoked prism or micro prism where you're using like a tiny, tiny bit in one side. And, and this is all like, there's a whole science to it. If you go to a developmental optometrist or um, just an optometrist who does vision therapy, they're more likely to use these types of prisms. Um, you can, if you go to that learn.servismussolutions.com, there is a place where you can like search and find a doctor um, that's in your area that would would use these types of prisms in therapy. Um, anyways, so there's like a lot of different ways that they can be used, right? You're either compensating for an eye turn or you're kind of just using it because it makes you feel good and <laughs> makes you walk straight or makes your visual field feel more balanced, right? So there's there's different ways that we're doing this. Now, is it good or is it bad? Like, this is a question that so many people are always asking, like, I'm afraid of wearing prism because I'm afraid that I'm just going to need more and more and more prism over time. And then I'm never going to have enough prism and, and, and then I'm going to have to have surgery. And that does happen. That's totally possible. If you're always, if I were to wear these all the time, it would be like this like relief to my brain. Like, oh, I don't have to try to work at all to keep my eyes straight. I can just sit here and these glasses are going to make it straight. But over time, I might get used to that and my eyes might turn in even further. And I might need to increase it. Instead of six diopters, I might need eight. And then I might need 10. Then I might have to keep going up until eventually my eyes are turning even more visibly in and needing surgery, right? So that, that can be a problem. And I have a bit of an analogy um, that can maybe help you understand this. Um, imagine that you are at the gym and you've decided you want to be able to do a box jump. Okay, well, if you wanna do something that, like to me, for my body right now, that would be completely like impossible. There's just no way that I have the muscle strength to jump from the floor onto a box this high. Trying to jump onto that box might be the same as somebody with like a severe like tra traumatic brain injury or a s severe double vision, something that, you know, your eyes are really not working together. Um, that just going into vision therapy and saying, okay, I want you to jump onto this box. It's, it's like saying you want them to have, be able to perfectly align their eyes and use their eyes together and have their visual feel everything lined up perfectly all at the beginning. And it's just not really a realistic expectation. So giving um, somebody a set of prisms and then sending them on their way without doing any training for the brain where you're teaching the eyes to work together, teaching the brain how to figure out where things are in space. It's like giving somebody a ladder to get on top of this box, right? They might be able to get up onto that box and in that moment, yay, they win, right? Like they put on that first pair of prisms and they're like, wow, this feels so much better. I feel, I'm on top of the box. I did it, I'm on the box. But really like they can't get up there on their own. 
If you want to actually be able to eventually jump onto that box, which means doing it without any glasses at all, right? No ladder. They're not gonna start you on a box this high. They might start you on a box that's only a foot off the ground and you're practicing that. And that might be putting, um, when I first started after surgery, my eye turn was turning in like I think 12 diopters. And so the first prism that I had on these glasses, there was this, we used a Fresnel prism, which is like a stick on, I think it was a 10. Okay, so that would be like having a box this short. Um, it made it really easy for my brain to fuse those images together. And so I got really, really good about doing all the vision therapy exercises, learning how to use my eyes together. I was using them together all the time with this 10 and just really building up my vision. So it's like practicing that one foot box jump for you know, a month. And then we came in and it was like, you know what, I'm actually getting a lot stronger. So um, they decreased my prism to eight. And that's like having the 18 inch or maybe I don't know how much bigger they make the box, right? And then I practiced on that for a while and my eyes got stronger and stronger. And I don't even want to call it stronger, but my, my brain and my eyes got more and more coordinated. And the more coordinated we got, the more we took the prism out of the glasses and slowly decreased that over time um, until the, I got to the point where now I don't need any glasses. I can just jump onto that top box, right? I can see in this world, I can use my eyes together and I don't need any prism at all. If you're thinking about long-term results, what are you wanting long-term? I wouldn't want prism unless I'm also working on actually getting better at the, the underlying problem. Why is there double vision? Why is your visual field shifted? There's like, there's underlying problems that are causing this, right? This is just a manifestation. The double vision is just saying there's something wrong back here in this brain eye connection. There's something that's not quite working, right? Yeah, the prism is gonna make that feel better, right? That's gonna, that's gonna be like the ladder to the top of the box or it's gonna be like the Band-Aid, right? It's gonna make you feel better in that moment, but I wouldn't personally use prism unless I'm also working on that underlying problem, working on why is there double vision and then working to fix that. And a great way to do that is gonna be through vision therapy. I'm a huge advocate for vision therapy. It doesn't mean that I'm anti-surgery. I also have had surgery and the combination is what really made a difference for me. If you would like to go to vision therapy and you don't know how to find an office, there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but um, probably the easiest for you is just to go to um, learn.strabismussolutions.com and then there's gonna be a link there for finding a vision therapy office. And you fill out a form with your information and I will send you my personalized recommendations in your area. And I um, am growing quite the list, so I am aware of a lot of different optometrists doing this type of vision therapy for people with strabismus or other visual problems where they're getting the double vision all over the world, right? This is not just in the United States. There are options all over, and I would love to help you find that. That is a free service that I provide. I don't charge for that. Um, I just wanna help people because it was such a life-changing thing for me to realize like, okay, there is an underlying problem and we're gonna actually address that instead of just putting the Band-Aid on the top. So are Band-Aids helpful? Yeah, they, they can help you get to where you wanna go, right? Like. You, you can use those little boxes. You can have steps that help you get to your eventual goal. You don't have to get there all at once without prism, but you wanna make sure there's a plan in place so that you're not going to be having to use these forever. And I will just add, um, there are some times, especially with like a vertical strabismus and, and, and just different cases where a small amount of prism is something that you might have for the rest of your life. And it might, it might change your life, right? It might make you feel so much better and be so worth it to you. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go straight to that. I would try this other stuff first and see if you can't get away from that long-term. So if you have any questions, put them down below. Um, if they're about how to prescribe PRISM, do not ask me. Um, I am not an optometrist. I am not an expert on this. I know a little bit. I just know the very surface. Um, the, the, and hopefully I helped you understand a little bit more about how they're used in vision therapy and on optometry and how they may or may not be beneficial for you. I'll see you in the next video.